Yesterday there were there were concerns about how big the um, the document is going to be. It is no, it is okay. Let the document be big as long as it is understood. As long as the animator understands you, there is no problem. They are going to reduce the document into a storyboard that somebody is going to talk about short. So very important. Tell us that it is an animation text which becomes a voiceover. So now this text will be read. And uh, again, there is the instruction to the animator that says develop any animation in which a virtual teacher explains to the learner the different types of carbon-based fuel. So once the animator has understood that they need to create virtual teacher, they will create the image of the teacher. Then the text which is going to come below it, which is the audio text, can then be even a bubble from the mouth for somebody who is going to see that visual. Text can come from the mouth and then as, as well as the same text is recorded into an audio so that now once the learner is interacting with this content you will hear this text as a voice of as if the teacher, the virtual teacher is talk. Animation instruction, learner instruction and specific instructions to record an audio or at least to highlight that this particular text must be recorded as an audio so that it can be heard. Are we all clear? Is it okay? We need to be sure that we are all moving together. So um, the images, you look for the images. If you can put it there, put it there. If you don't know where to find it, again these are Yesterday I talked about um, I talked about images which can be which can be used objects which can be shareable uh, and um, you can find them from anywhere. These ones are open source, so you can pick. Again, please take note of copyright. If the image is copyrighted, then don't copy it. What we can do, these guys who do, who do the animations are very good. If you don't find a specific image, you can write uh, the animation instruction for them to create that image. And they have their code. They know how to do that. So they can code and create for you custom-made image. And later on, those can be reused. Those are objects that can be now put in a store and they can be reused in other areas where those images are needed. Right, so I think... Um, yes, please. Uh, is there an also maybe, is there a need to acknowledge the source of the image in terms of this Absolutely. Yesterday I, told, I talked about attribution. Yes, important. Especially now for, for us at higher education. Yes, always attribute because um, you have used some information that is not necessarily yours. Again, part of Creative Commons, um, Creative Commons licenses are six. There are six types of Creative Commons licenses. And one of them that although the image may be free for you to use, you must acknowledge the source and the owner of um, the, the person that created it. So if it's um, C, it's a P, it is it is an i they are, those are the licenses under creative commons so you know the one which the c with the circle that one is obviously copyrighted so if you don't if you use it you must acknowledge or seek permission so depending on the severity of the license and later on as as i explained yesterday this content that you're creating which is going to sit on your lms will have your names on on that content as the contributors to it so already that one is um is going to much as it's creative commons and other people are going to use it sometimes you can say oh for you to be able to use it just reach out to us or at least acknowledge that this was produced by uh, emmy from chambogo university dr mwanga from barara and so on so that people are um, as they seek your permission or at least uh, attribute you also it improves your profile i talked about that yesterday and it helped those are the three things there i am emphasizing the audio text or the animation the voice over instruction so as you go to your activities remember to know text that you you would like to be uh, to be voiced to support the animation that is created. So that way we are talking about inclusion that everybody will be taken care of. Those who can see will be able to hear. Of course those who can see but cannot hear then we'll look at the animation and also read the alternative text that is there in the software. So the task for you, you are called the subject matter expert. That means it's your responsibility to break down your curriculum. We are emphasizing this again. It's from the curriculum, from the, the learning outcomes that you would like you would like to see from your learners those are the ones that you translate into the instructions that they must interact with the content in order to cause that learning to take place that is the genesis the heart of the matter understanding the curriculum knowing how to break it down 
And with online learning, content development, we already said, break it down into smaller units that they can learn within a very short time because of the attention span. One final component, one final component is the further reading. Now, for further reading, yesterday in, uh, on one of the slides, for further reading, I said you can include extra notes, which is tech. Now, those extra notes come from your, you call them handout. Don't pack the whole 15, 20 page handout into extra notes. That will be tedious to defeat the purpose for which we are trying to create and make our learning interesting online. Key highlights. Key highlights could form the extra notes. Now, when you want them to get the big document, because this is going to be online, just give a link. Maybe a PDF document that you have curated somewhere on the LMS. They can find it and do the further reading once you want to do that. It is important to give just highlights of the notes that you want to give them for further reading and further research. Again, at a uh, higher institution, there is always need for research. So within that section, you also indicate maybe other references, you cross-reference, so that if they are able to, to use the search tool within the LMS, then they can go to the site where you, you want them to do further read. So that's cross-reference. So very important. Please take note of that. I want to save time, so I'll stop here. That is sufficient for me just to tickle your mind so that when you go back to develop your course, these are the things you must have at the back of your mind. Any comments? I think I have talked enough. So today, this is my last talking. I will only talk to her at the end when we are discussing what are the next steps. Yes, Moses. Thank you very much uh, for what you call talking, but it is not talking, it is teaching. Yeah. Because you have been teaching all about Yesterday, today, you cannot uh, say you have been talking. Talking as if you are just talking something that has no value. Okay, so uh, I wanted to uh, appreciate the fellow published and uh, also the students who have been able to acquire them. Like I said, I will take the lion's share. I think I'm now 80%. That's what I can share. Great. Uh, maybe my, uh, my concern here is maybe we we'll elaborate to, uh, to us or give us a view and more, uh, more clarity on how we are going to be saying. Actually, it's supposed to be in the next steps. <laughs> you have already gotten into the next steps. You will initially, you will initially uh, work with me until we have agreed on the timelines. Once we have agreed on the timeline, then I will shift you to your neighbor. There's your neighbor there. Your neighbor takes over, okay, with her team. 